Welcome everyone. What's new in NIC 7.0? If you're considering upgrading, you should watch this video. You're going to see the new and tremendously improved U-Point technology. My biggest pet peeve about every previous version of NIC is now gone. Yay! Are you using more than one NIC plugin? Well, you no longer need to travel back and forth to Photoshop and Lightroom to get to your next plugin. Now you've got a direct flight. I'll show you how to do it. We now have quick export to send a file straight to your desktop or the cloud. Even though that's now available, you'd kind of need to see how to set it up first, which I will walk through for you. So let's pop the hood and have a look around the new NIC 7. If you don't have NIC just yet, but you want to get it after watching this video, go ahead and click the link in the description. Let's go. After downloading NIC 7, you will find it in Lightroom. You can right click on any image, say edit in, and then see all of your plugins listed there. In Photoshop, you're going to find it underneath the filter menu. For me personally, I love using the NIC selective tool. So you're going to find that under File, Automate, and NIC selective tool. So that will bring up this tool so you can have quick access to all of the programs within the NIC suite at the same time. If you have any trouble downloading this stuff or finding these things in Photoshop, do reach out to DxO. This is not something that I'm capable of helping you with. I'm sorry. Okay, so anything in this menu that has a little drop down arrow will have presets or favorites or your last edit that you can access here. So that's really handy. At the bottom of this list are your meta presets. Now these are presets that were created by using multiple NIC plugins together to create a particular look. So you may find that you like a particular preset for portraits or sunset images, and you keep coming back to it again and again. That is strictly a personal preference for me personally. I like to treat each image individually and I'll invoke whichever plugin I feel will help me with the image that I'm working on at the time. And I'm a little bit of a control freak, so I don't use a lot of presets. Now, this is not a deep dive video, so uh, I'm just going to run over a few things here. Um, so we've got categories, anything you've imported, anything that has to do with color, contrast, some vintage looks, softening. So if you want to narrow it down or you can just go back to all Nick, um, you can import other presets. You can create your own presets. I'm not going to spend too much time here. So the big chunk of what we're going to do is in the filters. So I have created some favorites. All you have to do is click on the little star right next to something that you use frequently. And then you can come in here and click on favorites and just narrow down the list. So you're not spending a lot of time going up and down trying to find something. So I'm just going to apply a couple of filters here and show you one of uh, the, my favorite new things. So each filter has got an add button and add to category. So if I want to create my own category of things, that's actually kind of something new that you can do. So you can create a new category of your own. So if there's something that I use specifically for my beach scenes, beach sunrises and sunsets or something like that. And I use the same three, four or five filters, whatever it is for those types of scenes. I can create my own category and save myself some time searching for stuff. So that's just something that's new that you can do. Each one of these filters has a drop down preset list. So you can click on a preset or you can just click the add button. When you add it, you will see a change in here and you can come over to the actual filter. Every single one of these is going to have different options. All right, so this is the strength slider of this one. So I'm going to crank this up just to make this really obvious what we're doing. So that's the strength. You can always lower the opacity of it. Can I get a heck yeah in the comments if you think that looks absolutely heinous? It's just for demonstration purposes. So here's the kicker. OK, so add control points. So if I click on this and place it somewhere in the photo, I'm telling Nick that I only want to add this effect to this area. In all of the previous versions of Nick, this was a circle. Every control point in every program was always a circle, endless circles. And it really annoyed me. But now you at least have the option of stretching this into an ellipse. So monumental improvement? Eh, eh, 
maybe not, but wait, there is more to the control points. I'm going to show you the best new addition to control points in the next image. So stay tuned for that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Woo, man. So that's one control point to add essentially the opposite effect. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hold the option key and it turns into a little, you can see it turns into a little negative right there. So if I want to add the whole, add to add the filter to the entire image, but not in my sky, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to drag that out and you can move this around. And now that effect is no longer uh, really uh, truly affecting my sky very much, but you can always ch check the mask. I highly recommend checking the mask to see what is and is not being affected. So if I wanted to make this a little bit narrower, a little bit more specific up into the sky area, I can. The next best addition to the control points, it's still not my favorite, but is the ability to add a luminosity mask for each of these filter effects. So let's see how this works. This can be extremely handy if you understand luminosity masks. So I can select a zone that I want to be affected. So if I only want the skylight filter to affect my trees, which are my darker tones, I'm going to come down here in the one and two range. But if I want it to affect all of the highlights, I'm going to bring it up here. And you can see how it's adding that pink look to the highlights. And then of course the midtones. And you can stretch these out and bring them down. Very, very powerful, the luminosity mask. And that's that choice right there. I'm going to delete that. Okay, here are two new things that we have available in Nick 7. We've got quick export and finally, finally, switch to. This is my absolute favorite thing. So switch to, and I'm going to bring it into Silver Effects Pro and turn it into a black and white. So it added the skylight filter with, from color effects in its own layer and it immediately brought it into Silver Effects Pro. So I no longer have to save it, exit it, and then open up another program within Photoshop. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and I'm going to click apply. And now I will have two separate layers, one that has silver effects, one that has color effects. And I chose to not create smart filters this time. If you create a smart filter that will save it so that you can actually reopen Color Effects Pro later in the future, which is very handy. So being able to hop from program to program is tremendous compared to how the workflow was previously. All right, now I'm going to use uh, something that used to be a pain in the butt and was not very useful on a situation like this. Now it's going to be very, very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and open up color effects again. And I'm going to add something. Let's just do a black and white just so you can see it. Black and white conversion. Okay. And I'm going to add the polygon tool. So let's add the polygon tool. And now I'm going to go click click. Now my control points don't have to be circles or ellipses anymore. So now I can come in here and take any shape I want. I'm just going to come down here and shorten this because we don't have all day. These points do not have to be perfect and let's speed this up a little bit. But what I'm trying to do is create a control point just on the inside there. There we go. <gasps> Wow! So each one of these control points has a little invert button. So if I wanted to switch that and bring color to the middle and change everything else to black and white, which actually looks a lot better, I would do that. So if I wanted to convert to a smart object here, uh, which is very handy in Photoshop, and then click apply. Because I turned it into a smart object, if I want, if I decided that I don't like this and I want to make a change or I need to fix that polygon and actually go all the way down here where I cut it off right there, um, I can uh, double click on the color effects and it will open back up again 
with all of the adjustments that I had so I can make changes. Okay, so one last option that we do have is the quick export. So quick export is going to save a copy uh, very quickly without you having to actually go back into Photoshop. So if you want to uh, make a change to where that goes and the type of file, you actually have to open up the preferences and go to export and then you'll find the quick export parameters. So if you want a, you know, just a quick 80, 90% quality JPEG. So you want to size it down and send it out for social media or something like that. You can do that right here, or you can choose uh, an eight or a 16 bit TIFF, choose your compression. Um, and then you can pick a destination folder for it. So if you want to kick everything out to the same folder and just keep things organized, I would do that, but you can ch make those changes here. And once you've changed that to, to JPEG from here on out, every time you click quick export, it will spit out that JPEG at 80% quality and put it in the folder where you decided to send it. Here's a couple before and after images that had some of that Nick magic applied, along with some Lightroom and Photoshop tricks that I've picked up along the way. If you want to see some of those, head over here to watch this next video. Y'all take care.